Ah, it's no use! I'll never get it right before the talent show. You just need a bit more practice. What are you working on? Uh, just a couple modifications to your axe. Hmm. I'll send a monster to ruin the talent show! That way the world will know that the Power Rangers have no talent! Primary materials for this prop include cardboard, a 1 inch diameter dowel rod, a half dozen foam cup holders, duct tape, a 2 inch diameter gift roll, black and yellow electrical tape, two large plastic cups, aluminum tape, label paper, scissors, an X Acto blade, and a pen or pencil. For a comprehensive list, please see the description. First, measure and cut your dowel rod to 31 inches. I tried this handsaw for about 10 seconds before switching to a real saw. Cut the foam cup holder so they wrap once around the dowel rod. Use duct tape to attach them. You'll need to run the foam the entire length of the dowel rod. If your dowel fits snugly in the gift wrap tube at this point, great. If it needs extra padding, wrap it in a few layers of newsprint. Slip the dowel inside the gift tube, and for extra stability, place a foam square at the end between the foam and the gift tube. Cap both ends of the tube with duct tape. Wrap the tube with yellow electrical tape. Cut lengths of black electrical tape to wrap around the tube, leaving a small band of yellow between every two pieces of black. If you prefer, you can wrap the tube in black and then cut thin strips of yellow for accents. Either way works fine. Next, draw and cut out this design. You'll need 13 to 20 of it, depending on your cardboard. Use an X-Acto blade to cut out the center section. Remember to exercise caution when using an X-Acto blade. Mark this foot-long section of the axe blade using the tube as a guide and cut out the piece. Trace the section on another axe template and cut it out. You'll need to repeat this on enough templates to match the height of your cardboard tube. For me, it was 8 pieces, but much of my cardboard was double thick. Place two pieces without the dowel space on either side of the axe. Measure and draw a line between these two points and cut off the piece. Repeat the process for the rest of the templates. This will be tricky to keep straight because when you cut the center pieces, you'll be left with two pieces. Nevertheless, it's important to keep them organized. I found it helpful to label all the cut points with similar numbers. Place an intact secondary piece on the table and use superglue to attach all the corresponding center pieces on top of it. On several of the middle axe pieces, cut away this section. You'll need to cut enough so there's a one and a quarter inch space between the two outer pieces. For mine, I had to cut six of the middle pieces. Remember not to cut the outer pieces. You need them intact. I had four, two on either side. On the top middle template, draw a one inch thick line from the edge of the blade and cut it away. Repeat this for the next two templates. By now, you've reached what will be the center of the ax. Leave the next two templates intact and lay them aside. Cut the edge off the final three templates. Restack the middle pieces to keep them in order. Remove the top template and cut away this section of the next few templates. Do not cut the blade off the center pieces we left intact earlier. Cut the blade off the next few, but leave the very bottom one intact. Here is your final rundown. Place the two center pieces with the blade intact at the center of the cardboard tube. Duct tape them in place. Place the other two sections of middle templates on either side of the tube, except the two half blade pieces. Duct tape the sections to the main axe. Tape the grip pieces together as well. Place the half blade pieces on either side of the axe and duct tape them in place. Attach the final outer template to the secondary axe piece. Draw and cut away the 1-inch blade line on the four outer intact cardboard templates. Place one of the templates on each side of the main axe. Use a compass or other circular object to draw a 4-inch diameter circle at this point on the outer template, as well as a line here. Cut away the portion below these marks. Use this piece as a guide to cut the other three outer pieces. Tape the piece in place on the main axe and repeat with a second piece on the flip side. Slide the secondary axe piece into place on the tube. 
place all of the second outer pieces on top of their counterparts. Use a ruler to draw this design across both axe pieces. On the secondary piece, cut at these points so you're left with these sections. On the main axe, cut away this portion so you're left with these sections. Cut the circle out of the piece you just removed, you'll need it later. Cut a thin strip of cardboard that will fit under the edge of this piece to serve as a spacer. Place strips of foam adhesive at the base of the secondary axe piece. Mark the point where the outer piece falls so that when you attach the spacer piece, it will still be concealed beneath. Attach the spacer with foam adhesive, then put a couple more strips on top. Place the outer piece on top. The end result should give you a slanting effect. Repeat this process for the other three sections. Remember, the pieces should slant upwards towards the center of the axe. Trace and cut out four more of the circles from earlier. Cut away the outer three trigger sections on this side of the axe. On the reverse side, repeat the entire process from adding the spacer pieces to removing the three trigger pieces. Cover the entire inner blade section in yellow electrical tape. Wrap the main axe in black electrical tape minus the blade edge and the trigger area. We'll get to those later. Cover the half blade section with black electrical tape. When you do, do not attach the half blade to the full blade. Once you've finished covering both sides, connect the front edges of the blade with duct tape. Be sure it only extends over the black. Recover the duct tape in electrical tape. Wrap the back tip of the blade in duct tape, then recover it in black electrical tape. Wrap the back point, this side section, and the trigger in yellow electrical tape. Remember to wrap both sides. Fill in any remaining cardboard with black electrical tape. Wrap the secondary piece in black electrical tape. Wrap this area with yellow on both sides. Slide the secondary piece onto the main axe. Cut away the top inch and a half of two plastic cups. Cut out the bottom of each cup. Wrap the bottom half of one in aluminum tape. Use a compass to draw a circle the same diameter as the wide end of your cup, followed by an interior circle with the diameter of your cardboard tube. Draw a one inch bar coming from the top of the circles. Cut out the inner circle, then the rest of the design. Draw another circle with the tube's diameter, with another circle around just slightly bigger than the first. Draw a long 1 inch bar coming from this circle. Cut out this piece. Because the circle is so narrow, reinforce the entire thing with duct tape. Place the small circle piece on the main axe, followed by a plastic cup, small end first. Fill the cup with newsprint for stability. Wrap the larger circle piece in duct tape, then place it on the axe handle. Place the second cup last, larger end first. Fill the second cup with newsprint. Connect the two cups at the center with duct tape. The entire section stays at the end of the handle. Line up the two bars so that they reach upwards as shown. Fold the bars into this shape and duct tape them together. Place it against a piece of cardboard and trace this basic design. Once you cut it out, you'll need to custom cut it to your axe. Once it fits into the space, trace and copy it four more times. Place the pieces between the bars and duct tape them in place. Cover the entire piece in aluminum tape. Use one of the circles from earlier to trace another and draw a larger circle around it one inch wider. Cut out the circle, the middle, and one cut through the ring. Curve the ring inward so it forms a cone shape just larger than your original circle. Cut away the excess and duct tape the cone shape together. Use duct tape to attach the circle to the cone and wrap it in aluminum tape. Attach the circle piece here with adhesive foam squares and repeat on the flip side. Next, draw or find a picture of the Mastodon power coin, size it in a photo editor, and print two on label paper. Cut out the designs and place one in each of the two aluminum tape circles. And there's your finished power axe. Zachary, Billy, your friends need you. The Bunny Patrol has attacked them in the youth center. Right, we're out of here.
We need to get back to the command center.